Okay, we're back. We're live with uh, our Corona Watch show. It gets harder to do this uh, every week because it's more of a dismay. It really gets on your nerves. But uh, we all study it. We all hear about it. In the media, we read about it. And we all, we all learning about it. Um, regrettably, we have to. Uh, so uh, we have Winston Welsh um, uh, and uh, uh, Stephanie Dalton, uh, a continuation of our Trump Week group. Uh, welcome to the show, you guys. Let's talk about uh, Corona Watch. Huh? So, well, I'm fairly you... impressed. I was just going to say the numbers. Yeah, I was going to ask you about the numbers. What are the numbers? That's the first order of business. What are the stats? Well, the latest numbers I have are the world numbers, 196,000 cases and 7,800 deaths. And the Italy portion of that is 31,000 cases and 2,500 deaths. And the U.S. cases that have been reported, remember we're slow on the testing here, the U.S. number is 6,300 cases reported and 109 deaths, probably up until yesterday or today. Yeah. And Hawaii, yeah, Hawaii. Hawaii has 14 cases and um, as of today, we have 14 cases. One was uh, added uh, in the last 24 hours, a, a Hawaii yeah. island person. Yeah. No deaths right now. Huh? And no deaths. Yeah. Magic. So, Winston, you know, I think big question. I always I hear these numbers and I hear about Italy especially, and for that matter, Iran, uh, who is, uh, you know, used to be our enemy, maybe still is, but somehow we're, we have a kinship with them now. Um, so why are the numbers so bad in Italy and Iran? Why are they remarkably worse than other places? Well, it's a good question. And I think uh, yeah, there was one Italian doctor who said, don't do what we did or what we didn't do. And I think it's this whole idea of shut things down right now. When you get these first things, everyone these new words that we didn't even have, um, you know, last week, which was uh, social distancing and uh, self quarantine and flatten the curve. All of these things are um, new to us, but they're, they're what we need to do right now. We need to just stay away from each other so that we can stop the spread as quickly as possible, or at least flatten the curve. From what I understand, it's not it will reduce the number of total cases, but it's really just about being able to handle the crush of patients uh, that really need that care. Um, most folks, it looks like 80% will be able just to write it out at home. A lot of that number, like maybe 15, 20% won't even know they really have it. So um, we can be carriers out there. We need to be vigilant. We need to understand that our presence in public right now is like a typhoid Mary. For the kids out there watching, you know, it just means you are potentially a carrier of this disease. And if you aren't worried for your own health, think about the other folks in society, your neighbors, your friends, your grandparents, your parents, your coworkers who may be devastated by this disease um, or killed. So right now we just need to do what the Italians say, buckle down, uh, be prepared and, uh, and practice these social distancing and or uh, total isolation for at least a while. Well, I, you know, all of this seems to be showing a basic principle, and that is a stitch in time saves nine. Uh, that if you start, um, you know, employing these, these, um, these steps early, you're going to save a lot of lives. You're going to reduce the number of cases. And in any event, you're going to flatten the curve. Uh, and I guess it, Italy didn't do that. And we didn't do that. And Hawaii didn't do that either, but we're a smaller market. Uh, so uh, don't you think that that's got to be one of the factors involved for both um, for both Italy and Iran, that they didn't do anything at a time when it was, you know, going logarithmic? From what I understand, it's also based on their cultures. When you have people that were storming uh, a couple of mosques for devoted festivals uh, or, or, or holidays, you know, when you had a leader coming out and saying there may be millions of people dying in Iran uh, because they haven't been practicing these 
um, social distancing and quarantine procedures. You have other countries that have done very well, like uh, Singapore, Hong Kong, uh, Taiwan, to a different extent, uh, South Korea, while they've been hit very hard, their death rate hasn't been as hard and they have massively employed testing there, which is what we really need here. We need it to the, be to the point where when we want to take a test, a self-test every morning before we go out to the store, we know, okay, I'm safe today until this thing basically is extinguished and it's going to flare up, uh, you know, from uh, Mike Pence said it may go until July, but I've it may be around for another 18 months or longer. So um, we just have to look at these other countries and say what went right and what went wrong and apply that as quickly as possible as we can. And of course, there's different states of different scenarios, but the Washington of today, Washington State or New York uh, State is the Kansas and the Houston and the Honolulu of tomorrow potentially. So no one's immune from this. This is a human disease. It affects everyone and we need to uh, just be uh, aware of that this uh, well you may not particularly feel like you're a vulnerable person uh or that it's a hoax or whatever you think it is it's not it's real just look at look at italy where folks are um, they're not even treating people apparently who are over 70 now because there's so many cases that are just overwhelming their hospitals and yeah. untold numbers that they said are, are have died in their homes and nobody knows along with the fact that uh, they do have a much older population there. So that may have a part of it. And um, let's face it, older folks smoked more. They maybe still smoke <clears throat> in Europe. Uh, that does play a part of it. And as well in China, from uh, what I understand that, that, that the risk factors are older male smokers and then underlying health conditions. Uh, and because more men smoke than women, that's that's part of it. Uh, Stephanie, I wonder if part of it is uh, also that it seems to mutate. And right now, I think it's generally recognized that there's a there's a, a lesser aggressive mutation and a, a more aggressive mutation. You think that plays into this? Oh, I'm certain it does. And along with many other factors that we're going to discover about this uh, this new bug, um, I um, I, I find the the reminder from Winston about former smokers to be particularly alarming as well. That is a risk factor. I think that um, Dr. Fauci's statement um, um, about how, when we can expect some relief um, from him, uh, from the NIH, he's with the director of the Arthritis and Metabolic Diseases Unit of the National Institute of Health in Bethesda, Maryland. Um, and he's been one of the experts guiding um, the effort. I think, well, I hope that that is definitely the case because he's such an, his expertise is deep and wide. But he said that it's only, it, he said only, but a few, several weeks, in several weeks, we should be able to know about the trajectory of this mushroom cloud that we're going to have out of this virus here in the U.S. So I, I, found, I find that uh, that comforting to some degree because I think we we want to not be as bad as these other countries and in, in having it peak like it has there. And uh, in a few weeks, we'll know that with more that more data in, we'll have a better idea in, in maybe two weeks, two and a half weeks, 14, 15 days, something like that, um, 20 days. That That's good news that we will be able to do a dipstick there and know if we're going to millions or hundreds of thousands, I suppose, is really what's realistic as far as people being really sick, much less dying. Um, so I think that was uh, important to, to to put on the timeline here. That was will be a marker. Well, you, you know, uh, China seems to have uh, reached and, and gone over the other side of the tipping point. Uh, as I recall, uh, yesterday there was only one case or one death, one, just one um, in China, in all of China. That is really something. So their, you know, draconian methods, uh, Winston, um, have, have had some effect. I mean, you have to believe them. And we know there's a, a fair amount of disinformation com coming from China. But uh, if, if it's believable, I, I would tend to believe it. Um, you know, they have achieved... Um, they they have flattened the curve, they have they have actually gone over the tipping point. Uh, doesn't it sound like that? 
it does seem like that. And, uh, you know, when you have people in this country that that don't believe either in science or just think that it's not real. Uh, I saw kids partying on the beach in uh, Florida yesterday and not everywhere has not all the states have taken these uh, more stringent precautions like San Francisco, where you were you were sheltering in place. This is as if I mean, it's as, it's as, as much as it gets. And we're going to see a lot more of that. One thing that uh, we see about this, and, and there's a great um, web, uh, website, uh, Gretchen LaSalle, L-A-S-A-L-L-E-M-D.com. And in there, she has information about the seasonal flu, flu versus COVID. And COVID is not the flu. COVID is something completely different. But for young folks that think this is not me, this flu is on, on based on Chinese information uh, through February 11th, 14 to 25 times higher for zero to 19 year olds than regular flu is as far as um, infection and perhaps death rates. For people who are 50 to 59, it's nine to 21 times higher than the flu. And for all people, it looks like it's about 2.3% uh, of the uh, folks that get sick are, you know, have a, uh, a fatality rate there. So it's 12 to 24 times higher than the flu. This is for everybody. I think as we're as we're coming down and we're going to see different in this country, different cities, how they react. And I think you can go back to the, the, the Spanish flu, the so-called Spanish flu of 1918. And they had two examples. One was Philadelphia and the other was St. Louis. In St. Louis, they were able to flatten the curve. In Philadelphia, they weren't. They had mass outbreak and mass deaths. We're going to see a lot more of that here. But I think because of the internet, because of what are evolving best practices, we're going to see some really uh, stringent um, controls on people. And it's not coming from the federal government. It's going to come from states, from municipalities and from companies. A lot of companies are just saying, it's, you're, you're just not coming in. You no contact with work. You may not go to your work related groups. Um, they're viewing it, if nothing else, through liability issues, but it's, it's, it's more just the only way that we know right now to flatten this thing out is just to stay home and away from other people. Yeah, but I'm reminded, uh, and, and surely if we all follow the rules, um, that should flatten the curve such as it did in China, knock wood. Of course, you, you run the risk of, mm, of being complacent about it and, and then having a, a sort of a reinfection if you don't watch out. If you send everybody back to work, you wind up with a, with a reinfection. And in certain areas, that's happened. But Stephanie, I want to go back to your point about, well, first, I want to, I want to go to the news article that Winston sent us both about, what was it, Sweden, uh, where the Swedish government or the Swedish people are saying to American, to kids, Swedish kids in American schools, come back home. America's not safe. It's safer in Sweden. You know, when I was it, a it kid, was my the mother- Norwegian, Yeah, the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. Oh, I'm close um, Sending out. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> Uh, the poorly developed health services and infrastructure, for example, the USA. Yikes. Yikes. You know, when I was a kid, my mother would say to me, be thankful, be joyous. You were born and raised in the United States of America. It's the best country in the world. But all that has kind of changed now. Um, first, Trump gets to be president. Now this. Uh, and there are other places that are safer. Singapore, for example, recognized the problem earlier and uh, took steps. And I think Singapore is safer than the United States. And there are other places like that too. Uh, but it's not only the contagion aspect and following the rules of you know, social separation. It's the beds. It's the beds. China could build a, a hospital in, I don't know, 19 days, a 50-story hospital. Um, we can't do that. We're not doing that. This is democracy. Got to get a building permit. <laughs> right? Can't do emergency things like that. So the result is we don't have enough beds. And frankly, we don't have the money to buy the beds or the staff to staff these hospitals. People are going to be lining up in the corridors and in tents outside. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? Because, if, you know, if you don't get treatment when you get really sick, you know, it's over for you. Yeah. Well, as about that, I mean, I think at, at one level, it's time we had some reality check back. Uh, we haven't had that. All we hear is everything is perfect and everything is wonderful. And at some point where 
was the feedback going to enter into the process of um, of development? So I, I appreciate getting that feedback from our neighbors across the pond here, um, other than Britain. And I, I really think it's important to get that, that international view of the U.S. now. I mean, we used to be what number one and we we had the capacity and have it evidently still likely um if we could start over again we have all of the means to be a world leader in managing and solving this crisis but because of the issues that the facts that have already been brought up at the late start and uh, all of these other concerns that have been mentioned uh, that didn't happen and we didn't get on our scooter <laughs> and we didn't get that first kickoff to get with our own needs and then to meet the needs of the whole world. I mean, that's that's what we expect to, to do as Americans. We didn't, we win World War II. <laughs> I mean, I've heard that mentioned is that a country that, that led the win for World War II can also lead the win for this. It was a long but time ago. It shot and so uh that feedback is really important for us to have that not just our leader and leaders but the people need to understand how our potential is is there we've been there and uh we need to step back up to that level i have confidence you know one of the big issues is uh is the u.s up to up to the um it's 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 uh, up to its standard in developing um, viral, viral cure medicines and viral vaccines. And um, I haven't heard that much about it. You know, you hear vague statements about uh, th there's all these laboratories working, but I think the laboratories you hear about are overseas. Do you have a handle on that, Winston? Are we working on stuff now? Uh, have we got candidates ready to go to trial? Uh, are, are we going to be able to develop real medicines here? Or is it going to happen somewhere else in the world? In China, for example, they got a lot of medicine, they got a lot of technology, a lot of science, a lot of AI, whatnot, and, and Europe too. Well, you know, I, I am a big believer in America. I love this country. It is the shining uh, city on the hill. We are also able to learn from our mistakes. That's a great thing about this nation. We can look at this point, we can look at this whole period in recent history and say, yeah, that really didn't work out well, but let's course correct. Let's change. Let's say we need more investment in, um, in well, like having a pandemic task force uh, that's always there to have a surplus space in hospitals, to um, invest in our science and technology. And we do lead the world in science and technology. The difference is, is that the world has risen up to our level. In some cases, it may surpass it in, in certain things, and we are collaborative in all of that. But it has been emerging the way for decades and decades. And now we may have some things uh, not only to, to learn, but also to share. It's a give and take. When this vaccine is developed, it may be in France, it may be in China, it may be in Korea. It may be a collaborative thing. It may be uh, Google I, it, and 12-year-olds and that are combining um, their knowledge. It's going to come from all over the place and it doesn't really matter where it comes from but i think that uh we just need to like we always have look at the situation be honest with ourselves uh, be truthful and adopt what is best for us so when we're armed with the truth and we're armed with integrity i think that uh, we will beat this thing we're going to have no doubt a lot of pain and suffering right here there are not enough machines there's not enough hospital beds there's not enough workers that's where we have to step up as individuals. That's where we have to step up to our community. That's where we have to go to our neighbors and ask them, do you, hey, do you have food? Do you, are you feeling okay? Here's my number. If you don't have it, oh, did you, you know, and all of that. It's it's making sure that we're connected to our communities and to our loved ones, because uh, that's where the front line starts is right with us. And uh, take, they say, put on your mask first, I guess. In this case, um, maybe the literal mask, but maybe not, and then assist those around you. But by all means, I, I believe that this country is going to um, to be up to the challenge. States are doing it, cities are doing it. We're gonna learn from each other and we just have to uh, each step up as we can on uh, whatever level that uh, that yeah. means in society. We'd better. So, uh, you know, Stephanie, one, one of the things about previous epidemics, both in the Spanish flu and uh, I think it was in SARS, maybe in MERS too, um, was that 20% of the fatalities were health workers. 
Um, this mm -hmm. is of great concern because health workers get demoralized. Um, you know, if now if you're on a hospital ship and you're in the army or the navy running the hospital ship, your family is hundreds, thousands of miles away. You don't have to go home at night. And and if you somehow get infected, well, you might you might get sick. You will get sick. Um, but but um, you don't you don't have to. Uh, you're not worried about you know your family catching it from you. In in the case of a local hospital like here and other states, um, if you're a health worker and you work on virus patients all day, and then you go home, you got a substantial risk that you're going to infect your family before you even know you have it. Unless, as, as Winston said, you test in the morning and test in the night and all that, but we don't have a test. So, you know, doesn't that demoralize the health workers? And for the lack of health workers, what do we do? In every great outbreak in history, there have been, you know, charitable souls, altruists that go out and be health workers and they save other people and they are selfless and we you know we owe them our greatest admiration but they tend they tend to get sick and the question is whether you get more whether you can find more uh, as the process goes on what do you think well this is a concern i think there's more attention given to it now uh than it ever has had before i mean i, I think didn't even walter reed who gave us the uh you saw yellow fever, didn't he die in the practice to do that, to accomplish that uh, task of solving the, that problem. And there are many novels and, um, and stories about people who have actually given their lives in order to help other people get through these diseases and get them themselves. But um, I think they're willing now to step up and talk about that, that this is also a professional topic and not to be uh, um, ignored or avoided because they can't do the job and no one will be there to do the job. They see that more clearly. That's what's alarming is that now they see that more clearly, I think, than in any of these other infestations because they see that they're getting sick. They're looking around, they're getting sick either by transfer of the, of the virus or just by not having the right equipment. And so I think that's driving much more commentary on this and that there are great efforts to get them the supplies and the materials that they need and the conditions of work that they have to be in because they have to be, they can't walk up to that bed and start slapping on a thermometer somewhere or you know the blood pressure thing all of that stuff requires touching. And so they really have to be thinking a lot about how distance themselves and take care of themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that this is really important and it's going to be uh, critical to our to total survival. Whole survival. In other words, what's going to happen once we get to what Dr. Fauci says in a couple of weeks, we're going to find out what it might be. What does our mushroom cloud here in the U.S. look like? What's that trajectory? And uh, can, we, um, can we keep that curve flat there are we going to succeed in flattening that curve yeah. that's big the, question right? big question and, yeah and let's take a short that, break stephanie we can take a short break sure. we're going to come back and we're going to answer the question that everyone wants to hear about what's the latest and greatest what's the current advice the best advice we can provide or uh, the medical community can provide on how you deal with your own health we'll be right back after this very short break I think okay, I'm we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Corona Watch uh, here on Think Tech Hawaii. And we have uh, Stephanie Dalton and Winston Welch to talk about what's happening and what what the current advice, the current, what do you want to call it, the, the current mm, community suggestions are for how you can protect your own health. Uh, so, Winston, what, what, what appeals to you? How have you changed your life? And what uh, other solutions are you considering? Well, uh, it's, it's a good question because we're all swimming in information right now. But basically, uh, yeah, take a break from social media if you need to. We, most people get the message. Don't touch stuff. Don't touch your head. 
when you come in, when you go out, wash your hands, use alcohol, sanitize your, your spaces that you actually do go to where you might have been out. And uh, you need to now. Uh, right this very moment in Hawaii, we don't have a lot of sick people, uh, but it's going to come. We need to look out for each other. We need to look out for ourselves. We need to make sure that we have enough to eat in our house, in our houses and our neighbors have enough to eat. We're not talking hoarding situations. So I think basically it's just looking out for each other right now and making sure that we know that we're here, that we're still a community. We're going to get through this. The main thing I think is half of it or more is, um, is mental and uh, emotional and spiritual fortitude right now so that we can deal with the physical when it and if it comes. Yeah. So what about this uh, issue about the masks, uh, Stephanie? Uh, you know, we've been told uh, that we really don't need masks in, unless we're sick. Um, but, the, you know, the, the wisdom is on that seems to have changed. Do we need masks or not? Well, I think it's a good idea. And with the models of recovery that uh, Japan and Korea and China, I mean, these people wore masks all the time. So I think we have an example of the behavior and we've seen that it has certainly not diminished their recovery. It probably has accelerated it. So we probably in America ought to get used to that. It's not something we ordinarily do, but I think it's a good idea. Also, we're carrying around our Clorox wipes. So we're also trying to remember to keep ourselves uh, sanitized or uh, sterilized uh, with Clorox uh, treatment as much as we can as we move through our, our daily tasks and especially if they take us away from the home two questions one is uh so i i'm wearing my mask i do not have the disease i'm wearing my mask and somebody is um, you know a few feet away from me and droplets get on the mask uh, now i got i got droplets i'm walking around with droplets how do i prevent that uh, I, there's some wisdom that says you got to change the mask all the time and there's some wisdom that says well you got to clean the mask with the alcohol um, what do you do to make sure that you're not carrying around an infectious piece of gear? Winston, what do you think about that? Don't go out of your house if you don't need to so that you're not exposing yourself and others. Uh, it would be the first thing that I'd say and practice social distancing. There was a lady behind me at the drugstore the other day and just coughing up a storm with no concern about anyone around her. And uh, we're going to deal with that. Uh, that's going to be around there. Um, so again just don't go out if you don't need to especially right now in these next in this next little while if if you got a mask it's probably better protection than not but we have a, a big shortage i saw that uh the national government is going it has invoked a sort of a korean war um, uh, policy that allows them to um, maybe take over some production of facilities for more masks as uh, stephanie was saying we need to get these first and foremost to our first responders and healthcare workers. And then after that, we can go to the general population. When you go to Asia, way before this crisis, it was not unusual to see a lot of the population wearing masks oh. anyway, just to avoid picking up some anyway. Yeah, yeah they, well, where do you go? Where do you go, Steph? You go to Walmart? In Walmart, they have no sanitizer left. <clears throat> I'm oh, sure you can't oh, find a mask in Walmart. Where do I go? You don't, uh, yeah, there the, are only three suppliers in Hawaii and they're just totally stricken with absence of, of any of those. And they're not coming in for a while as it takes a long time to get things over here. But my health uh, care worker in the family, my favorite dentist has told, informed me that we can wash. And as you said, Jay, wipe down with Clorox or alcohol, these masks. So even the, the ones that are not the N95, they're cloths though. So it is possible to do some sanitizing of them and even washing them. If, uh, if we wish, and that could keep our, our masks uh, going for, for longer than, um, than, than getting hit with just one, one time knowing we're mm -hmm. contaminated. But it, it is a problem. Fred Winston, go ahead. The, I, well, one thing I'd read is that they, the problem with the mask isn't that the mask isn't effective. It is effective to a large degree, but it's that we touch our face two to 3,000 times a day, and therefore mm -hmm. we're kind of recontaminating ourselves and that's not especially useful. Um, I noticed so I was putting glasses too and I'm thinking maybe glass. I think somebody has put out that admonition is clean your glasses. Leave the, and of course don't touch them. I've been a poor example of that today but 
clean your glasses because and, that and can clean, clean your big, cell phones. It would make sense that they, that's a deal. Yeah, clean well, your sure. cell phones. Clean your cell phones because it's probably the dirtiest thing that you own. Yeah, if you look at your cell phone in the right light, you'll see all these fingerprints on it, an accumulation <laughs> of weeks of fingerprints, and those fingerprints could easily have the virus. So, but do yeah. not clean your cell phone with soap and water. That's probably not a good idea. <laughs> Alcohol Don't would be better. <laughs> Get your Clorox wipe out. <laughs> that was the. So only what? What about I alcohol? Think. What about alcohol? I mean, what, what do I do? I get a little squeegee jar Drink of alcohol. Literally. Say. Drink liberally, <laughs> wine, <laughs> vodka, or beer. No, in, in all seriousness, if you can find alcohol right now to clean your stuff with, that's great. But chances are you're not going to find it, like Stephanie said. There's, it's not anywhere. So just assume you're not going to have it. But most people, if you check, on your, you probably have a, probably have something that's better than nothing. So look and see what you've already got. Look in your office, look in maybe even your car where you've got this and, and you've, you've kind of pre-prepared even without knowing it. Um, yeah, that's that's what we're, and then wait for the supplies to come back in. There are plenty of supplies in this country. We've just kind of stripped them for right now, but they're coming back folks. Food, medicine, uh, all of it is, is being restocked as fast as, as our uh, retailers can do. You know, the ironic thing you've both pointed out um, is that this is the time. Right now is the time to follow these rules. We're on a timeline. If it's later, it's not as effective. It's, you know, if it, if it had been sooner, it would have been better. But here we are, and it's a right now. So all the rules, we have yes. to follow the rules because that will help. That will save lives. It will, it will flatten the curve and so forth. So even if, your point, your point, even if, these um, chemicals are not available. Um, even if the masks are not available, whatever other rules we have to follow, we have to follow them now. It's very important. And uh, that's yes. why we like to do shows remotely like this. Okay, closing okay. comments on how you have changed your life over the past few weeks, uh, Stephanie, uh, how you see things differently because of this uh, epidemic. Um, and how you see the future. I mean, you're, may I ask you for your state of mind? Well, my state of mind is Clorox bound, Clorox wipe bound. I am using those wherever I go. I wipe, when I did go to a restaurant, I did wipe down the entire menu and the table and acted probably out of order if, by courtesy standards we used to use, but that, that's not important anymore. It's just thinking about what it is that is going to uh, infect you and trying to prevent that with the tools we have. And certainly those wipes, also alcohol, uh, the 60% rubbing alcohol, that's that's good too. And maybe <laughs> you can, if all you have is a bottle of vodka, you can put that on a napkin too. And um, that's a disinfectant. <laughs> but I would like to say too that um, as far as our numbers at the beginning, I, I also read that and heard that West Virginia is the 50th state uh, to uh, get the virus. So they have one case uh, there now. And so that fills out the map completely. So it's made its way everywhere. So it's so insidious that we really are up against a, a, a dreadful attack. In uh, the steps that we've been told to take, we need to take them. And as Jay says, we need to do it now. Yeah. Winston, how about you? What's your, what, what have you changed your life? What things are you doing now, uh, uh, even in the absence of some of the equipment you'd like to have? And what is your state of mind going forward? You know, I think it's like uh, it's almost like Elizabeth Kubler Ross's stages of, of death denial type type of thing. You get the shock, you get a denial, uh, and then you get into an, ex an acceptance mode. We've had fundamental, massive changes in our society in the past. Uh, four days, five days, our society is by and large being shut down for right now so that we can have a reboot. This is our chance, as you said, this is our chance to make the difference, to stay at home, learn to love the people that you live with again, you know, uh, learn who your neighbors are. That's what I've been doing. I've been connecting with people that I love and that I care about, making sure that they're okay, because a lot of them are in a world of, um, of confusion and pain. They've lost their work, they, their work has been shut down. They may not be covered at all by uh, unemployment uh, or uh, other, you know, whatever the government may or may not give. 
they may not have prepared well, as we all should be. Um, for whatever reasons, it doesn't matter. It's not a time for judgment. It's a time for stepping up and seeing how you can be of service and also having some conversations with the people that you love about protocols, about not uh, going out, about when they come back, who's going to take care of who if they get sick and who's going to look out for grandma and all of those those conversations that we really need to be having right now as contingency plans while we are still in a pretty calm period. Yeah, some of which are uncomfortable, but which are all necessary. Well, thank you, you guys. Uh, I was going to suggest, um, you know, other areas of discussion for next time we meet uh, next Wednesday, but I, but I think let's let it let's let it unfold, because there'll be so much news, so much change in our world. It's hard to predict what we'll be talking about next time, but we will be talking about the evolution and the unfolding of this crisis, which is changing our world as we speak. Thank you, Stephanie Dalton. Thank you, Winston Welch. Aloha till next week.